All right, go ahead and fire her up. And uh, just tell me. All right, good to go. All right, welcome everyone. We are back in the reboot of the terrifying Tauntaun. We have three cantankerous near to dells with us today. Um, we have Jahi, DK, and Steven. Um, I think with our newest compatriot, we'll allow him to introduce himself to get kind of a feel for his character. So why don't we open with a little bit of character introduction so we can get a kind of feel of what the hell we're working with here today. And then I'll go into the initial uh, rendition of how everything's going to go down. So why don't you take it from the top, TK? Tell us about uh, Cajon. All right, cool. Uh, I'm DK. You can also call me Jack, or you can just refer to me as my character. Uh, Cahalan is a savior Oath of Paladins, uh, Oath of Ancients Paladin. Um, he is a fae from the Feywilds, and he was originally a student, uh, training to become a cleric for the Summer Queen. But um, something happened to him. And he's been spirited away. Now he is an Oath of Ancients Paladin under the Lady in Shadows. Um, he's about six feet exactly. I believe he's about 200 pounds. Um, sort of thicker than a regular satyr. Um, much darker color scheme. A much meaner looking than normal too. Um, yet, despite how mean he looks, he's still lawful neutral. <clears throat> he wields a very spiky looking shield as well as a whip. I'm not sure what further you want me to describe. That's pretty good. Uh, so who wants to go next? Steven, Jahi, y'all want to Rochambeau for it? Timmy, you can go next. You always like going last. I don't. I go <laughs> first usually. No, you like going last. Oh, yeah, whatever. We're not going to get into an argument No, about I always it. go first, man. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are talking about. I always go first nine times out of ten. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Anyway. All right. Um, so, let's see. My character is Garel. Uh, he is an Eldrin elf. Um, he is an arcane trickster. Um, Wither Bloom student, although technically it's a different school in this world, because uh, that's Raven Ravnica. I uh, can't think straight. Um, so, don't know exactly what school he was in just yet, but he uh, he hails from. <laughs> yes, ITT Magical Institute. Exactly. Uh, how do you say Valinar? That Valinar? 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 Valinar. Valinar. Thank you. I don't know how to say shit. Um, he hails from Valinar. Uh, he works for, well, not works for, he comes from a family of horse breeders and trainers uh, who are also kind of very well known for their archery. Um, he is quite good at archery from horseback. Um, that won't happen for a while, but he is quite good at it. Um, and that's his, that's about all you guys can really know for now. Okay. No, right, Josh, take it away. Uh, so Noros, nicknamed Storm Chaser, um, was pretty much he's just a he's a pilot for the uh, house. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Ladair. Lyrandar. Lyrandar. Uh, pretty much he started off as a pilot for Lyrandar, and he soon discovered that he actually is uh, the bastard child of the head, and he's end up unbeknownst to himself that he is. Um, Technically, technically, he's been working at the house as just like a simple servant and pilot, and coming to find out that he's technically the heir to a good chunk of it. Um, so he's definitely unused to that. Uh, he is a half elf sorcerer. Um, notable things about him is that he has like little 
streaks in his hair in his normally dark brown hair that's like white his left eye is a bright glowing blue that some swear crackles sometimes uh, and he has a lot of scars covering his face from an accident in which uh, he had crashed his ship into a storm elemental um, other than that I mean uh, he's kind of still coming to terms with the fact that uh, he's been working for his dad for almost all of his life and he never knew it so definitely that in regard to whatnot. Um, but overall, he's a somewhat very confident man. He knows what he's doing, and he's definitely a people's person uh, to anyone he meets. Um, that's pretty much his, that's no one else. Oh, good. All right, thanks for the opening narrations. Now let's, uh, let's segue into the final thing that kind of sets the stage. Um, the reason you are here today in this game is because you we're given a letter and a key and a train ticket to go to Arcanix to reclaim an ancient legacy that was bequeathed onto you by someone in your life. Um, they could be family, they could be a mentor, um, it could be a demi lich that for some strange reason you're extremely good friends with. I mean, the guy's Jerry, he's really cool, he always brings you nice beer and he doesn't cheap out on it, he doesn't bring natty light, he gets the good stuff. Um, it can be whatever you want. Um, so kind of Take it from the top. Talk about the person that gave you the letter. That's the level 20 character you, you made for today. Um, and that person naturally has expired. They have died in some capacity. Um, now, as you may know, at the end of today's session, you're going to be clobbering with them. So you may or may not be expiring at that time. So you're welcome to leave it uh, as an open-ended mystery. But describe the letter that you get, the key that you receive, and the train ticket and how you're going to board and get to Arcanix. Basically where you are right now in regards to the map. Now if you look at the map, um, that little purple uh, circle in the dead center of it is Arcanix. Um, can you all see the map? I cannot. I cannot. Okay, let me just put your tokens on the goddamn map. Wait, right, can you see the map now? No. No. Okay, hold on a second, it's being fucking stupid. Can also, you see the map now. Yeah. Also, real quick, I don't think you gave me permissions to give my character tokens, which I have them ready to go. But I don't think you gave me permissions to put them on my character. Um, you should be able to. I set everyone to have their own permissions to do it. Um, but just send me your tokens, and I'll slap your token in there while we play. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Can you see the map now? Nope. I can. I cannot. <laughs> I fucking hate everything. This is Let me stupid. reload. It might be on my end. Remember how it's been kicking me out? I don't know. If oh, yeah, that's true. It, it, yeah. No, I, I set it to have um, infinite spread on it. Foundry's a little annoying when it comes to... Oh, here, I forgot what the problem is. Ah. All right, can everyone see it now? Yes, I can now. I reloaded yep. so good. Oh, well, it was also set to GM only, even though I set uh, allow anyone to see, because it was also set to GM only, it just, yeah. So, yeah. remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks for me. A little purple. Uh, you'll see Thrain on the map. Due west of Thrain, you see a little purple circle, and the dead center of that is Arcanix. Now, um, our good friend, Noros, you would come from Stormhome. Um, that is actually in the dead center of the map on the north coast. It's a little tiny island, basically yeah. due north of Mornland. Yeah, that's where you come from, technically. That's where all the storm stores are at. That's where all those Marcus Storm people come from. So you would be journeying south and then taking the rail line from probably Flame Keep out west to Passage, then down to Arcanix. Now, our other good friend is from Valinar. Valinar actually has a small rail line to it, um, but it's cut off due to the Mornland, and our satyr friend here, uh, that guy, I have no idea where the hell that motherfucker was. Uh, I am over Wait. in Moorholds. You're in where? You put me over in Moorholds? Uh, top right? No, no, no. You're in the where Dwarven Kingdom. Actually from. No, no, I just, no, I just put your tokens there because it allows you to see. Uh. You're not actually there. I can't actually prop all your tokens where you are, so I'm just going to do that. Um, so where would you like to be, Cahalan? Uh, technically I could come from fucking anywhere since I came from a different plane totally. Yeah. 
Um, so Maybe Sharn. You want that nice neo noir start? Sure. Okay, I'll stick uh, yes, definitely. Darn. Definitely because uh, I am totally um, going to be playing detective and interrogator. I just love the slow drag of the icons across the map. It just fucking tickles me pink. Um, <laughs> all right. So starting from the top again, we'll start with DK, then we'll go to Steve, uh, Steven, and then we'll go to Jahi. Um, tell me about the person who gave you the letter and how you're going to go about your business getting onto the train. Uh, so take it from the top, DK. Remember, Sharn is basically magical New York City, and that's the easiest way to describe it. Um, it's huge, it's dense, it's tall, it's eclectic. There's magical trains and elementals and all kinds of chicanery going on. So okay. take it from the top, DK. Uh, quick question before I describe how I get about uh, my life. Uh, do I have access to the um, Eldritch Invocation? No, you don't get that technically until you arrive at the location. Okay. So, um, since I'm so, yeah. in New York City, I get uh, people give me some funny fucking looks for being a satyr. Horns and everything. Go legs. Um, but I pay them no mind because I don't care about their discrimination or even uh, their opinions. It has nothing to do with my mission. I will have received my letter through a convoluted route uh, because the person who sent me the letter is... Uh, has a spy background and he does bullshit like that and uh, Colin would find it extremely annoying but effective because the message got to him from who knows where um, just one second he doesn't have it next second uh, some kid bumps into him kid probably got paid off uh, through his uh, route um, and I will recognize the s uh, symbol on the letter to be representing the Lady in Shadows, uh, my god and his patron, the Archway. Um, so I will open the letter, read through it. It's obviously in some weird code that he had previously taught me for this exact situation. And the key, I would have no idea what it looks like because it would be um, hidden within a block of wax. I will have to find a way to melt the wax in order to get the key. Right now, it just looks like scented soap. Um, which I will maintain it in that state until I need the key. Um, I will have dealt with any discrimination and tried to get myself on the nearest highway, either carriage or other mystical means of travel, to just take a direct route to the um, and uh, the endpoint city. As you're as you're making your way through the streets, kind of looking around like a tourist in New York City, shocked by all the towers, um, a gnome going by in a magical motorcycle says, "Hey, Bob, watch where you're walking. Some of us are driving here." And then he gives you an extremely strange gesture, which you interpret as being very rude. And then he drives away. <clears throat> um, I'd be disgruntled by this, um, but I will remember that gesture for in cases that I need to disrespect somebody else. Uh, for now, though, I'm just there. You know, like, mentally remember it, or, like, write it down, or draw it, or something? <laughs> I'm going to mentally remember, because I'm going to be staring at my own middle finger for a couple minutes while walking. Okay, I like that. Just, like, how the fuck is this? How is this rude? I don't understand. These creatures... Why do they do these things? But, yep, so I'm going to memorize the middle finger and that it is rude, apparently. Um, though how an appendage is rude, um, don't, don't quite understand. Um, I also don't understand why he told me that, you know, some of them are driving, because, like, other people are walking. Why did I get singled out? You actually, uh, give me a perception check really quick, actually. Wow, that is not good. Um, you look around. Uh, um, you look around, and you actually note that on the floor beneath you, um, in large brass letters, um, it says, Motorized Transport uh, Only, Pedestrian Strictly Forbidden. Uh, you're like, oh dear. 
I was being rude. Hmm. I, I, I pause uh, a minute and say, pedestrian. Ah, that must refer to me, a civilian. They both have aliens in them. Idians. The words sound similar enough to him. So, um, he meanders over to closer to the general area where people are walking. All right. Um, give me a survival check really quick. All right, good. Um, you notice um, a very large sign that says, Immediate fast transportation to Arcanix. Straight this way, 100 yards. And you make your way down, and you find yourself quickly at the train station. Now, I'm going to segue to um, the next No Good Nick. Uh, no Good Nick 2, um, which is, let me just remember how the hell to pronounce uh, Stephen's character. Gurel. How are you making your way towards Arcanix? And who gave it to me? The letter? All that The stuff. level 20 that you made? No, 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 I'm saying. Yeah. You want me to explain that, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Wing it. Curious what kind of flourish. Maybe, you know, you're sitting there drinking your yak milk and then some guy comes up all sweaty on a horse and just hands you the leather-wrapped satchel. I don't know. Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so... Garel's sitting with his family. They are eating breakfast, kind of, before the day's chores of mucking about with the horses and all that kind of stuff and practice for archery and everything like that. And he's having a chat with his mother and father just, you know, about the daily things. And then his younger brother comes in and looks at him and says, Gabriel, you, you have a letter. He chunks it at his head because little brother. And mm -hmm. Gabriel swiftly dodges out of the way and grabs it and then mm -hmm. looks at it, immediately recognizing who it's from. It was from a friend of his who oftentimes would come around asking for a horse to go here, a horse to go there, would always bring them back in good condition, never had any problems with him. And he was known to be a researcher. He uh, he used to just be a regular elf, and through research of his own volition, he adjusted himself a few times, and now looks way, way different compared to all the other elves of Alinar. And as such, he's a bit of a outcast in most areas, but for okay. Garel, he loves him. He's a good dude, and he's just, he's always been a great friend. So he gets this letter, promptly reads it, finds out, oh, okay, I need to go, I need to head that way, and is like, all right, well, I'm gonna help my friend. So talks to his mom and dad real quick and says, all right, well, uh, <clears throat> right, so I've got a head out then, yeah, um, I'm going to get one of the horses and we're going to go, i, I got to head over to the lightning rail, it's going to take me a while, got to head over towards, well, towards the, the Mornlands, I guess Gatherhold would be the first city where it's actually at, it's going to take me a little bit, but when I take one of the horses, his dad's like, you can take it, just, <sighs> Slap it when you need it to come home. It will find its way to us. Right, thanks, Dad. And hauls ass off to the stables, grabs a horse, and heads off towards Gatherhold, the closest city that actually has a lightning rail that can get him all the way in that general direction. Because I don't see anything else other than, unless I'm wrong, up here by Lake Sire. No, that's actually the smartest choice. Uh, you arrive in Gatherhold. Your journey across the waste was rather uneventful. You're accustomed to trekking across the northern recesses of Valinar, and the Blade Desert is mainly composed of desolate ruins left over from the last war. There are only very minute skirmishes over in this area. Uh, the Valinar elves held it down rather firmly. A proud thing, as you note the desolate waste untouched by the ravages of man. But as you continue on your course, your quest, <laughs> exactly. 
As you continue to course your way across the landscape, you arrive in Gatherholm. Um, I now have to quickly look up what the hell Gatherhold looks like, so I can give you some kind of weird, <laughs> piddly narration. Um, oh my god, it's in the shape of a scarab beetle that's holding a sun temple? <laughs> this is so based. Hold on, I gotta put this in chat. It's a really tiny image, because I don't have the time to like dig up and find the really big one. I'm gonna stick it in Misadventures so that uh, Olympia can see it, too. Or not. Hold on a second, it's being fucking stupid. Boo. Text. Yeah, it's yeah, it's being dumb and refusing to show it. Okay, right, everyone will just have to take my word for it. Okay. Uh, Gather hold is in the shape of a scarab beetle. Um, the roofs of the building are coated in mother of pearl, so they glisten in the sun. It is shaded by an oasis and hugs Lake Galifar, and in the center of the water is a large temple to an elven sun goddess, which the elves of the area revere with great piety. Do you um, now? Does Gural have some affinity for the sun goddess? No, Gural okay. is. 100% just does not give a shit about the gods because they have not given a shit about him. He knows they exist, but he's like, mm, meh. Perfect. Alright. You arrive in the city and you arrive at the train station and you see, you know, uh, uh, this is going to become a running gag. Uh, a gnome comes out. And you see him kind of tap a small stone on his shoulder and pop it off and go, Hello? Hello? All right! Train for Iconix is departing in 30 minutes. Make sure you have all your goods. And no lollygagging! As he taps on a sign that says lollygagging. No lollygagging. And he proceeds to stretch, put the stone back in his pocket, and you see him take out a little notation as he makes note of the OT that he's putting in right now, despite it being like two in the afternoon and, and then he wanders off <laughs> all right uh now noros my good man i imagine that you are now uh amenable uh, yeah um uh so pretty much noros is starting off his day like how he normally does he's currently on the um he's currently like in the front yard where they're doing all the ships, he's like helping. He's pretty much like running, almost in charge of everything. Despite him, despite him being very young, he mostly just like helps runs and makes sure all the diagnostics are good on all the ships and whatnot, and things like that. And mm -hmm. he's just chatting amongst all of the um, people around. This is just like a uh, weaker, like a uh, just uh, like a bit after his accident and stuff like that. So he does have the big scar over his eye. His hair is also kind of roughly and whatnot. He's wearing like the somewhat uniform they kind of make him wear in this position, which is just like a vest, button down shirt, you know, boat, like tie, stuff like that. Um, he absolutely despises it. He'd rather just be wearing his normal you know, kind of uniform style thing, but he's 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 fine with it, with it right? Um, his room is just currently just talking to a coworker about just like things to come and you know, what they've been expecting recently and things like that. As you're sitting around doing your regular course of maintenance and what have you, you suddenly hear a kind of knock on the exterior door of the vessel that you're in. Um, he kind of like walks over to it, opens up the door, and he's just like, uh, to see who it is. You open the door, and behind the door is the custom Uh, wearing waiters, white gloves, dressed to the nines. Wait, 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 um, wait, wait. Uh, DK said the audio cut for him. Oh, here. Let's just wait a little bit, make sure we get everything back. Um, you good, DK? I know I can. Oh, you fucking kidding me. Just give it a pause and we can start. Uh, pause it and then we can start back up. <laughs> 